Good morning, everyone. Let's stand together. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope of wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us. Let's put our hands together. We seek. Say good morning to someone nearby. Good morning, church. My name is Brian. I have a few announcements for us this morning. First of all, we want to say welcome to anybody who may be visiting with us today um, or new to the church here at Calvary Chapel. Thank you for worshiping with us. And if you wouldn't mind filling out the welcome card, you'll find in the seat back in front of you, leaving it with us at the welcome counter. We want to better get to know you. Um, Hey, number of announcements this morning, but uh, of course, the announcements we're going to hear today and so much more can be found on our website and via our e-bulletin. So please sign up for the e-bulletin, check out our website as frequently as you possibly can, and find out everything that's going on here at Calvary Chapel Central Buck. A big thing that is going on here uh, is that our senior high 
is going to the Dominican Republic tomorrow morning. 6 a.m. <laughs> applause during the announcement. Um, 6 a.m. they leave tomorrow morning uh, for the Dominican Republic. So um, prayer is a first resort, not a last resort. So please pray for the leaders, the youth, that are going on this trip, pray that the, that, that the light of Jesus Christ would shine into dark places, to dark hearts, and um, a hedge of protection would be built around the whole endeavor down in the Dominican Republic. So there's lots to pray for. You receive an insert or a handout on your way in, and uh, you can hang that on your refrigerator, keep that on your dashboard, your desk at work, whatever it takes, but pray for the youth group as they go down to the Dominican Republic. On the third, when the senior high returns, the, on the third we'll have a, a picture and sharing time after third service, and also for the junior high, which was a few weeks ago, they went down to Philly on their mission trip, we'll have a, a sharing and picture time on August 10th for that. So please mark those dates if you don't mind. Next Friday through Sunday, the Salt Rock Cafe will have a sidewalk sale. So um, are you looking for bar bargains on, on Bibles and godly books, good Christian books and, and other, other kinds of materials? Please make a note. Come on out, sidewalk sale next, next weekend for the Salt Rock Cafe. This week, women's Bible studies, Tuesday night, 7 p.m., and Friday morning at 9. So ladies, mark your calendars. Make sure you, if you're available, you come out for that. August 2nd, from 12 to 4, Camp Curiosity is our is our potluck picnic and baptism. Please, I know you've marked the date already, you've heard the announcement before, and I know you saw the tent on your way in. So um, a baptism is gonna happen, that's, that's the key event during this event. So please, if, if being baptized is something that the Lord has put on your heart, you wanna, sh you wanna show an outward expression of what's happened to you on the inside through, through our Lord Jesus Christ, then please come out, be baptized, but also there's a picnic going on at the same time. So um, we, we're looking for you to sign up for various parts to areas to volunteer and to bring your favorite side dish. It is a potluck picnic. We'll provide the meat, you provide the sides. How about that? <laughs> Sign up at the, at the tent. If you have any questions, you can ask somebody who's standing behind the table there. Rock the Block, August 9th in Kensington. The Rock Ministries down in Kensington, uh, a, Calvary, a, church, a Calvary Chapel church down there is, is, is fellowshipping and is, is bringing in other churches to have this, uh, Rock the Block rock, uh, block Party. It's going to be a great time right in the midst of Kensington. All kinds of carnival-like festivities, um, um, performers, musicians, inflatables, all kinds of things for kids just to bring the kids in such a downtrodden area out and the adults and to, and to first and foremost let them know who Jesus Christ is. So we'll be heading up the gospel and prayer tent. Um, and uh, hey, look, I just heard that we're going to have a bus going down. So. If you're interested, there'll be a bus. You can talk to Steve and Michelle Ewing. They'll be out at the counter. If you have any questions about it, there'll be a, 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 if you're concerned about how to get down there or you've never been down there before, we've got that worked out for you. So talk to Steve and Michelle, and we'll be glad to answer any questions you have about that. Rock the block, August 9th. September 12th to the 14th. You know, I've, you've heard me and other people um, announce this before, and I know, man, I know how you are. If you're like me, you hear something once, you got it down, done, you don't have to think about it again, right? Right. So... We're saying it again and again and again. 12th to the 14th of September, all in, men's weekend. So guys, men over 18 and fathers, if you have high school age sons, bring them along too. The discounted registration is going on right now. Our, our speaker is Gil Trustees from Calvary Chapel, uh, Philadelphia. So please, it'll be a great time to get away. And it's not a retreat because men don't retreat. It's a, it's a men's weekend, okay? The marriage conference is, is October 17th to the 18th. I know you saved the date, now you can register. So please register online. If you go onto our website, there's a button um, towards the bottom of the web of the web page that says current signups. Just click that and you can see all the current signups that are going on here at church that are available through the website. <laughs> Prayer partners will be up front. Please make use of them. If you have something on your heart you wanna pray about, please come forward and pray with one of our prayer partners. The prayer room, of course, is always open. I'm going to ask you kindly to please make sure that your cell phones are silenced. And while you're silencing your cell phones, check this out. Lord, so we continue now in this time of worship, Lord. 
exalting your name, but realizing that there is a wide path and a narrow path, Lord, and the narrow one leads to salvation. So that is what we choose, Lord, to seek after you wholeheartedly. So, Lord, I pray that you will bless this time of worship, Lord, as we bless your name. Minister to us, Lord, as we minister to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow. Turning with 
the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes bless the
draws near and my time has come Lord, still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years in and forever day when our strength is failing, Lord. Lord, we need you. Oh, how we need you. We need your Holy Spirit in our lives, Lord, to fill us up, fill us afresh this morning. Lord, as we sing these praises, Lord, as we dig into your word, Lord, make us into the men and women who you have called us to be, laying aside all those hindrances that so easily entangle, Lord, running towards the prize. Lord, we love you and we thank you for all you've done for us and all that you will continue to do for us, Lord. So as we worship you in song now, Lord, we also worship you by giving back to you in this offering. Let this be used to your glory and your honor. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty? So much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth, holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. is amazing grace. This is a failing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The king of glory, the king of glory. Who rules the nations in truth and justice? Shines like the sun. amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you would lay down your life and I would be set free oh I say for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is 
the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is, worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Amazing grace. This is a failing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I would be set free. Oh. you've done for me. Jesus, I sing for all you've done. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. For all he's done. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for what you have done for us. Thank you, Lord, for the security that we have in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins, Lord. Thank you that not only have you forgiven us, and, and frankly, Lord, that would have been enough in one sense if you had shown us your mercy and forgiven us of our sins. But far more than that, if that could be, far more than that, Lord, you've called us your sons and daughters, sons and daughters of the Most High God. And one day, Lord, around the throne, one day, Lord, we will be laying down our crowns and worshiping you, Lord, for what we've seen you do in our lives, the things that you give us credit for because you did it through us, Lord. And we want to be available to you. We want to worship you with our whole hearts. And you know the things that come in the middle, Lord, the things that, that disrupt us, Lord, in, in our walk with you. As strong as we think we are, we're frail, Lord, and, and we need you, Lord. And you know every heart in here this morning. You know every person and the things that are going on in our lives. You know the, the bodies that need your touch, the healing, Lord. And you know the, the marriages that need your touch and the prodigals that need to come home. You know the difficulty that's going on. You know the grief that many bear. And you know the joys that many are, are experiencing right now, Lord. And so in a way that only you can do, Lord, we lay this time before you and we ask by your spirit that you would bring from your word and apply it to us, Lord. Our lives, where we are right now, Lord. That we would have not just a time of learning, but, Lord, an encounter with the Most High. And that as we leave from here, that we would be changed because we've been in your presence, Lord. We thank you. Be honored and glorified here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. As you're taking a seat, please open your Bibles to Joshua chapter 24. I don't know how many months, but it's been a while. We've been journeying through Joshua. And um, we will... We will start in Judges next week, so please be reading ahead. Um, if you, how many, how many of you? Uh, I shouldn't ask these questions. So, um, Josh was a great book. Do you, do you agree? That Josh was a great book. Yeah, it's a great book. Uh, Judges is also a great book, but very different. Um, if you, if you're familiar with Judges, um, you know. And if you're not familiar with Judges, you get familiar with it. Um, it's a very different book. Great book. And, and the Lord has placed it in, in, in the Bible. He wants us to learn from this. Um, it is one of the most uh, mm, interesting books that you'll find uh, because so much of it is, I guess you'd say, R-rated, certainly at least PG-13, um, some even X-rated. And you say, that's in the Bible? And yes, it is. Because... Here we are, Joshua is going to speak to the nation. He's 110 years old, he's about to die. And, and within a short period of time, within a very short period of time, this nation that's going to say, we will serve the Lord with all of our hearts, we will follow him with all that we are, they will die off and the next generation will walk away from the Lord. And where every man does that which is right in his own eyes. And that's the theme of the book of the Judges, and it, it's, it, it 
it goes uh, almost 400 years, 350 plus, every, it's hard to tell, but it's a long period of time. And it won't take us that long to get through it, but it, it's a long period of time. So be reading ahead. Try to read the first three chapters before next week. Uh, it helps to give you a little background as to what we're going into. And it's not just ancient history, even though it is ancient history. It, it is very much contemporary history. It applies to where we are today in our society. It applies today uh, where we are in America. It applies to today where the church is in many ways and going to in many ways. And it's, it's a scary book in that regard. Uh, but God is always faithful. We see that throughout the book. So be reading it. Um, you know, one, one of the things about the Lord, we know it right, right from the start where the Lord brings Egypt out into the wilderness and the Sinai wilderness. And, and he says to them as he gives them the law, the first commandment, I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. You shall have no other gods before me. And he doesn't mean I want to be the first one in line. You can do what you want after me. He means I want to be number one on the list of one. That's what he, what's what he means. And, and we see this reiterated in many ways throughout the scripture. Um, you know, Jesus will say in, in Matthew that no one can serve two masters. He's either going to love the one and hate the other or he's going to hate this one and cling to the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. You can't be mastered by both of them. There's only one master that's available to us, and you we each have to choose who that is, whether it's going to be Jesus Christ or it's going to be some other stuff that's in our lives. And we call it stuff, but God says it's other gods, and it's important that we see it that way. That's not just a word game he's playing. He really means it. It's other gods. And so we see this reiterated throughout the scripture. We understand it as we read the word of God. Jesus says in in Luke chapter 14, whoever is not willing to forsake all and follow me cannot be my disciple. These are hard words. We say, this is Jesus. He's so kind. He's so sweet. He's, you know, I, I love him. That's, that's harsh stuff. It is harsh stuff. And, and, it, and, and, and so it's an, it's an important challenge to each of us as we're reading through the word of God to say, I remember when I accepted Christ as my savior. What does this mean? What, what is he saying to me? You know, well, I'm secure in Christ, but he's saying get rid of that other stuff. Get rid of that other stuff. And we find it becomes our lifetime. As we walk with the Lord, increasingly he shows us stuff that we need to, to, to get rid of in our lives. You think, gee, I, I got rid of all that stuff when I got saved, when he put, pulled me up out of Egypt. And now there's more, and yeah, there is. And, and so here, you know, we're going to read the first 15 verses, but, but in verse 15 at the very end, we all know it. We probably have some sort of a framed plaque or something in our home. A lot of people have it. We love this verse. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what Joshua is going to say. But what comes up to that point and how, he's, how God is challenging, not, it's yes, Joshua, but how the Lord is challenging the nation of Israel is very important for us to understand. And that theme, that theme, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You shall have no other gods before me. You can't serve both God and money. You must forsake all uh, and to follow me. That theme, you got to serve somebody, right? Bob Dylan, no, no sermon is, is, re, is complete without a Bob Dylan quote. You've got to serve somebody. It may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to serve somebody. He says there's no neutral ground, right? Uh, this is not inspired. I'm just saying, you know, that the whole idea is Jesus said you're either for me or you're against me. There's no neutral ground. That's the idea. It's important for us to be reminded of that because God wants to remind us of that. And, and I know for, for some of you have heard me say this before, but I, you know, I grew up in, in North Jersey, first of all, and then moved to Long Island, then came to Central Jersey. And, and in that time, you know, in North Jersey, living in Wayne, I – when it came to baseball, I, you know, the Yankees were, you know, I'm sorry, that's the only friend. Then, John, I moved to Long Island. And then, and then it was like the Mets, okay, the Mutts. And then, and then I, I, I moved to Central Jersey, and I didn't understand the whole Philly thing anyhow. So I, I, I was just sort of adrift and in a lot of ways. And then I, you know, I, I moved to Colorado, and there was no baseball team. And, and then, you know, Houston, and who cares? And I, I, 
and then Chicago. But along the way, of course, I married Renee, and then I found out it was important to be a baseball fan, and, and especially be a Cubs fan. I've said before, I'm a Cubs fan by marriage, because um, <laughs> I never understood how important it was. And, and you know, we, we talk about being a fan. There's a lot of fans, and, and, and you can be a fan of a, of a, of a team. Uh, Renee taught me early on in our marriage that when we moved, within a year after we were married, we moved to Philadelphia area, and uh, Fox County, and and her observation of the Philly fans, remember 1980, you know, we got saved in 1980, of course, in 1980, Phillies, oh man, everybody remembers them. And, um, and after that, it was, you know, for a while, and, and, and all of a sudden, everybody's saying they're bums, you know, right? And, and she said, you know what, they're fair weather fans around here. I'm a Cubs fan. We're loyal, you know, and, and well, you got to be loyal. I mean, if you're a Cubs fan, you're going to have to be loyal. It's been a, how long now, you know, since the World Series? And, and but, but there's a lesson in that, believe it or not. There's a lesson in that about loyalty, about being a follower, you know, and very often when you would talk about Christians, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that we're fans of. We're fans of, 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 of teams, you know, whether, whatever your sport may happen to be, or we're fans of um, mus musicians. I mean, there's all kinds of things we're fans of, even in the church, and sadly, this is what's happened to the church in America. People are fans of denominations or movements like Calvary Chapel or, or they're fans of pastors. I mean, the pastors sometimes get these rock star, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the reputations because there's something special about them. They're just men. They're made of the same stuff that we all are, right? Um, but but the people, people will be fans of, of the church building sometime or fans of, of the Sunday school program or, or fans of the worship team or the way it's done in that setting. Jesus isn't interested in fans. He's interested in followers. He's interested in people who've given their lives to him, who, who've received the, the payment for their sin and, and his spirit is, indwells them. They're born again and follow him. And that theme, New Testament, is right here, Old Testament. It's throughout the Bible. And Joshua is saying, choose this day whom you will serve. Choose this day. We have to choose. It's always about a choice. And even as believers, walking with the Lord for 30-some years, some of us, or more, it's always a matter of choice. It's always a matter of choice. Look at the, the time between the, the days of Joshua and, and the days of the judges. It's a matter of choice whether we will follow the Lord. They chose not to follow the Lord, and they end up in this place where everyone did that which was right in their own eyes. Joshua is 110 years old. He's called the nation now to Shechem. And, and he wants to address them there because the Lord uh, wants to speak to the people. And in these first 13 verses, actually the Lord speaks from verse 2 on, Joshua becomes a prophet in a way. He speaks, the, he takes the prophet's role. We think of prophecy as telling the future, but that's really not it most of the time. It's speaking, being the mouthpiece for the Lord. And the Lord speaks through him from verse 3 to verse 13 uh, in the New King James. You'll find I, the Lord is speaking, I, 17 times. Uh, in chapter 24 altogether, you'll find serve, as in serve the Lord, 17 times. It's important that we take note of that because God says it. And so Joshua has called in there, says, then Joshua, verse 1, he gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and he called for the elders of Israel, for their heads, their judges, and their officers, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, thus says the Lord God, of Israel, your fathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, dwelt on the other side of the river, that's the Euphrates River, in old times, and they served other gods. In case you didn't realize that, Abraham was also an idol worshiper before God called him out of there, just like we were idol worshipers before God called us out of that into the station of knowing him. And then I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river and I led him throughout all the land of Canaan and I multiplied his descendants and I gave him Isaac. And to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau I gave the mountains of Seir to possess. But Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Also I sent Moses and Aaron and, and I plagued Egypt according to what I did among them. Afterward I brought you out. And then I brought your fathers out of Egypt. And you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. And so they cried out to the Lord, and he, or I, put darkness between you and the Egyptians, brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes saw what I did 
in Egypt. And then you dwelt in the wilderness a long time. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites who dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. And they fought with you. But I gave them into your hand that you might possess their land. And I destroyed them before you. And then, ba then Balak, son of Zippor, uh, the king of Moab, he arose to make war against Israel. And he sent and called Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not listen to Balaam. And therefore, he continued to bless you. So I delivered you out of his hand. And then you went over the Jordan, you came to Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you. Also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. But I delivered them into your hand. By the way, that's important. I delivered them into your hand. I delivered this land into your hand. Just in terms of understanding the news today. It's important. Here it is, right in the Bible. It's their land. Okay? By the way, we're going to have a, a, a prophecy update on Wednesday night. I forgot to mention that earlier. And just to sort of look at what's going on in the Middle East right now, but also around the world. So please make a point of coming to that. He said, I delivered them, and I delivered this land, into your hand. I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out from before you. Also the two kings of the Amorites, but not with your sword or with your bow. I have given you a land for which you did not labor in cities, which you did not build, and you dwell in them. You eat of the vineyards and olive groves, which you did not plant. You know, it's important even in our own lives to recognize where we are. It's always good for us to look back on our lives. How did I get to this place? How did I get to this place of salvation? How did I get to this place of blessing? And to recognize that it was the Lord all along who directed me. It was the Lord all along who provided. It was the, long, the Lord all along who used even the stupid decisions that I made along the way to bring me to this place, to accept Christ as my Savior. It was the Lord who did that. And even where we are, if we're in sin, if we're in this place of rebellion against the Lord, to recognize it was my choices that brought me to this place. But the things, the good things that we have in our lives, the salvation that we have that's full and free, it's all from his hand. It's nothing that, that we've, we, we've brought nothing to this. Paul will say to the Corinthians, what do you have that you did not receive? In other words, everything that we have, our intellects, our, our profession, the, you know, the, the things that we're interested in, the relationships that we're involved in, the money that we're able to make, whatever it is, it all comes from the Lord. It all comes from the Lord. Every last bit of it, it's true for the Corinthians, it was true for Israel, it's true for us. It's the Lord who's done this. And it's important that we, that we keep that in, in focus as we, as we read his word. Because after he's gone through this, now he's going to use that word, verse 14. He says, now therefore, now therefore, because of all of what God has done. Now Joshua's speaking. Because of everything that the Lord did in bringing you to this place. Because of everything that the Lord did in, 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 in slaying your enemies. Because of everything that he did in providing you with this land. And providing you with these wells to drink from. And providing you from these, with these cities and these houses and these orchards and these, um, and these vineyards and, and these olive groves. None of which you had anything to do with. Because of all of that. And for us. Because of everything God has done. Now therefore. Fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and truth. The word serve, we, th we think of serve, and, and we're always interested in people who are willing to serve because every Christian should be w willing to serve um, the body of Christ. And in the body of Christ, we're always looking for people to serve. But in its strict definition, it has to do with worship. Therefore, worship the Lord. Because if we're worshiping the Lord and we have a single eye, and we're focused on him and him alone, and we're following him. See, as we worship him, then we will follow. Our feet will go the direction that our eye is looking, and, and we will go. So if, if we're going to do that, if we worship him and our feet will follow, then we will naturally want to serve in the body. It's a natural outflow, and the reverse is also true. So it's a natural outflow. He says, so therefore, because of all these things, fear the Lord. He says, serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. Put away the gods that your fathers served on the other side of the river. That's the Euphrates. He's talking about Abraham and, and Terah, Abraham's father. Put away those gods. Why is he saying put away those gods? They're in the land of Canaan. It's, it's going to be theirs. God's delivered them out of Egypt. He delivered them out of slavery, out of bondage. He's given them all this. Why on earth is Joshua 
hammering them about putting away those gods because they've been in the land for close to 30 years now. It took seven years to win the land. They've been living in, in the houses that were, that, that were sacrificed or offered up uh, by the people who left them, by their enemies. They're, 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 they're benefiting from the vineyards and the olive groves and the wells. They're benefiting from all of that. In the process, they also have the, the gods that were left behind. And, and they are worshiping. We're going to see that later on. They're already worshiping. It's already happening. And that's part of the reason that the challenge is coming here. This is not theoretical. It's not theoretical for them, and it's not theoretical for us either. Because as believers, we can get ourselves caught up in a whole lot of junk very easily. And, and so often what we do is we say, well, that's gone in my life, and that's gone in my life. And we say, look at all the great things God has done because of all this thing, stuff that's gone. And then I discover, oh, there's this too. Oh, there's this too. And, and okay, maybe it is theoretical for you, but the first service seemed to understand that, okay? <laughs> but so it's, it really isn't. It's not theoretical. It's very real because there's always that potential to bring in these other gods. And by the way, those gods... You know, on the other side of the Euphrates River, they were, they were worshiping, you know, Sumeramus and Tammuz. It might not mean anything to you. Uh, maybe the words uh, Astarte or Asherah mean something to you. Same thing as Sumeramus. It's just another name for the very same God. It's a very gross, sexual, it's a fertility goddess, okay? Um, and, and then also the Baals, the god of success and all that. We worship that in our society. We worship both those gods. And you can start to look at all the ancient idols that were, that were worshipped. It's right here, right now. And, and it affects us if we don't know the Lord, and it still affects us as we do know the Lord. It's just more subtle for us as we know the Lord, and we can get ourselves ensnared very easily. He says, make a choice. You have to make a choice. And so he says, so, well, verse 15, your Bible probably says, and... And uh, it, it may come as a surprise to you, but in Hebrew, you, that can be translated and or but <laughs> just as easily. I know that's weird, but it's true. So it seems in the context that he's really saying but, because he says before that, now therefore do this. Just as Paul says in, in Romans, after, after laying out the whole gospel of God and, and how we've come to this place and everything God has done for us, he says, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you... Offer yourselves as a living sacrifice unto God. We're to do that on the basis of what God has done for us. He's saying the same thing to them, in a sense. Therefore, serve the Lord. But if it seems evil to you, if you don't like it, if you don't want to do it, if it seems wrong, if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Make a choice, he says. There's no neutral ground. There's a line being drawn. And by the way, the line is drawn all the time in our lives. When we're, when we're seeking to walk with the Lord, we're realizing there are lines. There, there, are, there, there are guardrails that he's placed in our lives. He doesn't want us to go those other directions. He wants to walk the path with him. The way is narrow. He wants us to walk that path with him. He says, but it, if it seems evil to you, if you think it's wrong or too narrow-minded to serve the Lord, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether they be the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, or whether they be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now dwell, Canaan. But as for me and as for my house, here's a man, guys, here's a man. As for me, as for my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, that's God's ball. I mean, that's, that's, he's taking a stand that this is the way it's going to be in my life. He's an old man. He's 110 years old. I can say that. There's no 110-year-old people in here, I don't think. He's, he says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. He's not reasoning with them. He's commanding. The Lord has placed him in this position to command the people of Israel to make a decision this day whom you're going to serve. And that choice is always before us. And it begins with salvation. It begins with whether I'm going to accept the Lord. And I know there are people in here right now, just as there always have been, always will be, there are people who are listening and saying, yeah, yeah, well, you know, I'll just, we'll 
just keep going on. You know? And then there are some of us as believers who are saying, oh, I'm convicted by this. This, you know, this. this strikes me. But either way, whether you don't know Jesus Christ and he's calling you to him, or you do know him and he's saying, look, make it, make it right. Make sure that, that you've got it together. Make sure that your eye is single and full of light and you're following Christ and Christ alone. This is not popular stuff in our day. You know, and, and we're afraid a lot of times to offend people. We don't want to, we don't want to offend people. We don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. And I, and I appreciate the fact that God doesn't really care about being politically correct. And, and he, he uses discomfort in our lives to stir us up and say, hey, you get it? So here's, here are the choices that are in front of you. Because he loves us. And, and, and as believers, he wants us to walk with him, to walk with him. You know, we think, oh, these are ancient gods. Well, the gods exist today, and, and we have our own gods. We have, you know, we don't call them Baal, and we don't call them Asherah. We don't call them, you know, but th there are always people, Christians, who, who don't even think, maybe, that, you know, this is wrong to be sleeping with my girlfriend or my boyfriend. And God says, no, that's fornication. You don't do that. They don't realize that. And, and, and who are in love with that, that feeling and, that, and that, that lifestyle. Don't realize the God that they're worshiping in that. Or, or the whole idea of worshiping success. I mean, you can chase after success and you can, and you can get a lot of it. If you're good at it, you can get a lot of it. Scripture says that we become like the gods that we worship. And we can get to that point where we've got the money, we've got the success, and you know what we've got at that point? Nothing to say to anybody because all we care about at that point is the money and the success and maintaining our position in this kingdom while in the back of our mind we know it's all going to burn. Or, or, or you can worship your body. You can, and in our society today, it's all about fitness and stuff like that. Look at me, right? So it, it's all about that. <laughs> hey, look, you can pursue that. And, and to find yourself in your mid-40s and all of a sudden realize, this is getting more difficult, you know? Things are turning color and things are moving. There's a thing called gravity. You know, I've, uh, hey, you know, some of us, I don't have it, but, you know, and, and, uh, uh, no, wait, you don't even know what I'm saying. I, I, don't, I have no tattoos, right? But I know, I know guys who have tattoos my age, you know, who got them back in their teens. And whatever that is on their arm or, or, or on their chest, that's not what they bought, you know. <laughs> it doesn't look like that. It's a real bad-looking bruise, you know, because things change. Things move. You know, you can worship money, and you know what's going <laughs> to You're going to die, and your kids are going to get it anyhow. I mean, it's like you can worship these things. You can. It's not worth it. He says, serve the Lord. As for me and for my house, look, my kids can have the money. There's not much there anyhow. But <laughs> you know, and he says, you've got to make a choice and you've got to make it right. You don't have to turn there, but the story of Jacob, you know, that's 500 years earlier. And here's Jacob. He flees from his brother Esau because, you know, he conspires with his mother to connive and, and trick his mom to get the blessing. And then Esau is out to murder him. So he takes off, right? He takes off running. And he goes up to a place called Luz, which he, and, and there he, he has a dream. And in that dream, he sees, you know, this, this basically a staircase that comes from heaven. And he sees angels ascending and descending on it. And he says, oh, this is, must be the place where the angels ascend and descend on planet Earth. So this is the house of God. He calls the place Bethel. Bethel means house of God. And, and at that place, he makes a kind of a half-hearted commitment to the Lord. That if the Lord takes care of me, I'll do this. And then he goes on to the northeast, and he goes up to Padanaram, and he, he spends about 20 or a little bit more than 20 years up there. Uh, and God places Uncle Laban in his life, which is fitting, if you know anything about Jacob and you know anything about Uncle Laban. And then God leads him out of there. And it's a long story, but as he comes back after wrestling with the Lord one night and all this, um, the Lord then tells him, I want you to go back to Bethel. And so he moves in that direction, and he crosses over the Jordan, and he comes back to the area. But he stops 15 miles short of Bethel. He stops at a place called Shechem, 
Why? Well, they're in a place called Sukkot for a while, but then he ends up in, in Shechem. And there he builds an altar, and he calls it El Elohei Yisrael, which may not mean much to you on the surface. El, God, Elohei, the God of. Israel. When we think of Israel, we think of a nation. We think of a lot of people. No, God had changed his name from Jacob to Israel. So what he's really saying, this altar is for God, the God of me. Okay, that's really what he puts his name there. Like El Elohei John, in other words, right? God, the God of me. And we find that Jacob is still very me-centered at that point. And they settle in Shechem. Why did they settle in Shechem, you ask? Why would they do something like God has made it very clear? Go to Bethel. You've been through all this hard stuff. Why not go to Bethel? Instead, you go to Shechem. Why do you do that? I don't know. I don't know why they did it. Maybe it was a good school district. Maybe the, the housing values were great. It could get a job. That, you know, think of the, of the things that we did. Maybe the, 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 the Shechem traveling soccer team was, was really getting a lot of trophies and thought, this is great for the kids. And You know, it's interesting, the things that spur on the decisions that we make. When God says, no, I want you to do this. And we say, yeah, I'll do that. And so they settle there. And of course, it's a, it's a hard story. 11 boys, one girl. And Dinah is raped. And then, because he does nothing about it, he says nothing about it, his two sons, Levi and Simeon, they take it into their own hands, and they end up murdered. It's mass murder. They murder the men of, of the city. And now he speaks. Now he's upset. He says, all this difficulty you're going to bring on me, you've made me a scourge among all the peoples of the land. Now it's all about him. Me, me. If you read you know, chapter 34, verse 30, it's me, 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 I, my. It's all about him. And God, so gracious, says, now go up to Bethel. In other words, go back to the place where I reiterated the covenant with you. Sometimes we need to do that. Sometimes we need to go back to that place where we see clearly again. We need to go back to that place where God speaks to us again. And he goes back to that place. And before they leave Shechem, he says to his family this. He said, so put away, to his family, he says, put away the foreign gods. This is 500 years earlier. Put away the foreign gods that are among you. Purify yourselves. Change your garments. Then let us go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God who answered me in the day of my distress and who has been with me in the way which I have gone. He actually, we would say in our terminology, he'd say he got religion, right? He got, he got serious about it. His eye became single, and his whole life has changed after that. But look at the tragedy it, it, that happened in the family. Look what happens to his daughter. Look what happens to his sons as a result of his unwillingness to do what's right. Guys, are you listening? Because God's talking here about being all in. And I'm, this is not just a shameless pitch for the, the, the men's weekend. But, you know, we throw this term around a lot of times about being all in. God is all about being all in for men and women. And, and in many ways, especially in the family, men, he calls us to be the leaders. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, if you're a single mom that, you know, that something's going to go wrong here. No, God still gives you the grace to, you know, for you to take that leadership role. But as grandparents, we're called to be leaders. As parents, we're called to be leaders. As parents, we're raising our, our grandchildren because those children will give birth to our grandchildren. And the values that we instill in them now, not what the Christian school instills in them, not what the Sunday school or the youth group instills in them, but what we instill in them, work, you know, with the Lord together, what we instill in them affects our grandchildren. Jacob seems to get some of this at this point. And it's interesting, he has to tell his children, put away all those foreign gods. It's like saying to our family, to our children, take down those posters of the half-naked men and the half-naked women in your bedrooms. Get rid of the booze. Get rid of the drugs. Get, stop going to Atlantic City. Stop doing these things. Don't, don't walk with your eye looking everywhere, but look straight ahead. That's what he's saying. And he says, choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and for my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It's important that we, that we realize that. He's saying, put an end to it. You know, so often we, we think, well, you know, I, 
I, I, I mix it up with the people of the land, with the Canaanites. I mix it up with the people of the land because I want to be all things to all men. Come on, we know the scripture better than that. That's not what that verse means. He's not saying lower our standards to speak to the people of the land. No, walk with the Lord and we'll be a light in the society. That's not easy all the time. It's really not. But that's what he calls us to do. And, and it's easy to go to church, and it's easy to sing the songs, and it's easy to listen to the guy prattle on, and it's, oh, sometimes. And, it's, and, it's, and it's, it depends who the guy is. And, and it depends, and, and, and it's easy to write a check, but to say, but I give my heart fully to the Lord, and I will follow him. That's a constant walk and a constant choice. And sometimes we choose well, and sometimes we don't. But by his grace, we're always able to come back and to continue to walk with him. Choose this day whom you're going to serve, he says. You know, it's interesting. The people say, we will serve, and, and uh, we will serve the Lord, and you can kind of explore all that together because there's an interesting conversation that goes by. When they finally say, oh, no, we will. We're going to serve the Lord. And, and Joshua is going to say to them, you're witnesses against yourself this day that you will serve the Lord. You've made this decision. You're witnesses against yourself. They said, we're, we are we're witnesses against ourselves that we are going to serve the Lord. And he takes a rock, it says, Joshua 24 in verse um, 26. He took a large stone and he set it up there under the oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord there in Shechem. And Joshua said to all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness to us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord which he spoke to us. It shall therefore be a witness to you, lest you deny your God. You say, a rock? That's quaint. Well, can rocks hear? Apparently so. You say, rocks can't hear. How do you know? Jesus said if, if they didn't cry out, even the very rocks would cry out. So apparently if they can speak, they must be able to hear. You say, I, I don't get all this. No, you don't have to get all this. Jesus said, not an idle word is lost. Everything is remembered. Everything is heard by God. And, you know, if, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, one day, if you, if you choose to go through life rejecting him, one day, when you walk through that veil and to the other side, you will stand before a throne. And you'll never be able to say, no, I never really got this salvation thing. He's going to say, wait a minute. All these times, in fact, July 20th, 2014, Calvary, Central Bucks, middle service. You were there. You heard it. There was a rockhead who, who at least knows that, that you heard it. I heard it, he's going to say. There's no argument with that point. This is the truth. There's everything else, and they're all lies. And there's Jesus Christ. And he is the only way. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the only source of life. And no one, the Bible says, no one... Jesus says, no one comes to the Father except by him. Choose you this day whom you will serve. You're going to continue to serve the gods of pleasure, the gods of money, the gods of I want to do what I feel like, the gods of freedom. We've got a lot of that. We love that. That's one of our favorite gods in this nation. The God of freedom and liberty. I do what I want to. No one's going to tell me what to do. Or are you going to give your life? You can, you can make the decision today. There'll be prayer partners up here later on. You can come, you can pray if you want. And you can receive Christ as your Savior today. It's not about joining a church. Receive Christ as your Savior. But the rest of us, there's so many of us. We know the Lord. He's speaking to us. He's saying, make your decision. Get rid of the other stuff. Single-eyed. Walk with him. Make the choice today whom you're going to serve. Joshua is an interesting guy because he takes leadership over his, his home. And he stands up publicly and he says, as for me, as for my household, my family, we're going to serve the Lord. So, guys, men, he takes leadership in his home. Leadership. Not, I'm the breadwinner. That's a different issue. Not, I control the remote. That's a different issue. 
He takes leadership in his home as, as to spiritual issues. He takes leadership position. And, and he therefore directs he, or, 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 or gives direction to his family. He has a plan for his family. We're going to serve the Lord. Our children need to know who they are. They need to know who God is. We represent him to them. And I haven't always done a great job as a dad. But we represent them to him. Our children need to know who they are, how valuable they are. They need to know who he is, how to know him as Savior, and how to walk with him. It's a surprise to a lot of people that four out of five Christian young people will leave most churches with, from their senior year on, in high school, senior year in high school and on. Nothing for me. I don't get it. And a lot of it has to do with us. It, sure, we have a responsibility in the, in the church, but we have a responsibility in the home as to what it means to walk with the Lord, to serve the Lord. And, and Lord, the lot, there are a lot of things, right, that we, that we think are important. And, the, and look, sports are great for our kids. It comes as a surprise to most of us to realize that our kids pro probably are not going to go pro. And what, but if you considered how much effort and how much energy and investment we put there instead of in spiritual things, or even some people will say, look, you know, I, I, I didn't come to the Lord until much later in life, so it's up to them. They'll make their own decision. <sighs> That's setting them off adrift into the ocean, you know. Good luck. Especially in this society today. No, we have the responsibility. As parents, but men, we have that responsibility. And he's calling us to be single in our focus, to make the choice, and to follow him. It's not just about going to church. It's about following him. And, you know, I, you know, I mentioned the, the men's weekend before. That's a great place for guys to go and to, and to, and to be with other guys. And, and as guys spend time with each other, you know, the scripture says that iron sharpens iron. Men are to be together. Women too, and are, but but you know, as, as believers, we're to be together, and we sharpen one another, and we sharpen one another's walk. If if you've never been baptized since you've come to Christ, here here's a part of it. Well, he's not saying be baptized. No, he's saying make your choice, and and part of the first choice as a believer is actually to be baptized. And most of us in this society have let it go for so many years, but Jesus said, believe and be baptized. So if so. If you've not been baptized since you've believed, be baptized. Oh, that's just, that's just getting wet. Oh, I can, I can guarantee you, I know so many people who will say to you, my life completely changed after I was baptized. And I can't even explain why. Right, it's a spiritual thing. It's obedience to Jesus Christ. And in that obedience to Jesus Christ, he blesses and he gives direction to our lives. He wants us to follow him. He wants us to be discipled and to, and to walk with him and to become sharper believers. He wants us to understand the word better. He wants us to know how to pray. He wants us to trust him with our lives. These days are not getting easier. The season that we're in as a nation may just be a season. It may get a little bit better for a while. But the trajectory, that's the big word nowadays, is not like that. It's like that. And the difficulty and the trouble that's going to come upon the church, upon the true believers, is going to grow greater. With whom will you stand? Choose you this day, he says, whom you will serve. You're going to serve the other gods? Or are you going to serve the Lord? He says, as for me and for my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. That's a choice every one of us needs to make. And I, I encourage you, do not leave this room until you've made it for sure. Whether you've never trusted Christ before, make that decision today. Or you do know the Lord. But whatever you've got in your life, and we all get it, get rid of it so that we will walk single-focused with him. Let's stand together. Father, we, we come to you again. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for the, the clarity of your word. And we thank you that your word is alive and powerful and sharper than a double-edged sword.
It divides between soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and it alone, by your word, you discern the thoughts and the attitudes of our hearts. You know us, Lord. You search us, Lord. And we want you to search us, Lord. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. We thank you that you rescue us when we're in trouble. We thank you that you give us direction when we're lost. We thank you that you fill us when we're empty. You challenge us when we're full of ourselves. Father, for each one of us here, Lord, we need more of you in our lives. and We want to give ourselves to you. We commit ourselves again to you afresh. In the name of Jesus, amen. I lift my hands to the calling king, to the great I am, to you I sing. Serve no foreign God or any other treasure. You are my heart's desire, spirit without measure. Unto your name I will raise my sacrifice. God bless you all. Have a great week.